All right, hello everyone. I got my Nikon D810 back, and I'm going to shoot fall colors tomorrow, and I still had salt water and sand all in my tripod. So today we're gonna to talk about what I'm taking on my trip to shoot fall colors, and how I cleaned my tripod of all the grit and sand. Stay tuned and we'll talk about it. All right, welcome back everyone. Eric Marks here with FindingMiddleEarth.com and I got my Nikon D810 back. I'm so happy. Uh, the camera center called me on Friday morning and of course I dropped everything and just zoomed right over there and picked it up. Uh, they took the entire thing apart and they said everything looked great. Uh, they just cleaned everything out. They cleaned the sensor, they cleaned all the internal components and they said it's just like a brand new camera again. So uh, I just this is just awesome because I got it back just in time for my uh, trip to shoot fall colors tomorrow. Um, it's currently about, I think it's like 10 o'clock, uh, 10 p.m. Eastern time here um, on Saturday night, and I leave early in the morning uh, with my dad and my brother, and we're going to find um, some fall colors, and the theme of tomorrow is gonna kind of be waterfalls. We've all talked on speakerphone um, earlier today. We all kind of decided what we wanted to do uh, because um, you know, we wanted to know, sh should we plan to look, you know, for waterfalls? Should we look for long hikes to, you know, a certain location? Should we just do one hike? So we kind of decided that to hit uh, as many places as possible, we want to just uh, let the theme of the day be waterfalls because uh, waterfalls mixed with fall colors always work well and waterfalls um, typically work well at any time of day as long as you have an ND filter. So I don't have to wait for sunset or sunrise to come um, to get a great waterfall shot. And it's supposed to be a little cloudy tomorrow anyway, and that's typically the best weather for uh, waterfall photography because then you have nice even lighting. You don't have these little sun light dapples all along the water that kind of makes the, the lighting a little uneven. Um, so anyway, it's supposed to be uh, even lighting tomorrow for the waterfalls. Uh, I have checked a couple of websites and it looks like the fall colors are peaking where we're going. We're going to a place called Lookout Mountain which apparently at the top of Lookout Mountain, you can see across four states, I think it is, maybe three or four. Um, so we're going to a really cool place. I'm excited to go there. It's gonna be a two hour drive, uh, a lot of different places to hike along the mountain and along the trail that we're going. So I'm super excited about that. Um, so let's talk about uh, equipment for a second. So obviously taking my Nikon D810, I'm so glad I got that back. Um, my tripod, so when I was in uh, Florida with this, I got this all in the sand and I took it in the ocean and it got salt water and in, in sand, excuse me. <clears throat> it got salt water and sand all over it. And when I started, um, you know, retracting the legs back and forth, I started, I could kind of feel the crunch in beneath, uh, in between the, the little quarter turn screws here. And that's always a horrible feeling when you can, uh, when you kind of retract one of the legs and you pull it in and you feel that crunch with the sand and all the grittiness in there. So, um, I have kind of an unconventional way of cleaning my tripods um, that a lot of people don't do. Some people may do it, I've never heard of anyone doing it. Uh, I do take my tripod apart if it calls for it. But there is a really good way to clean your tripod uh, as long as you don't let the salt water sit in there too long. And I'll go ahead and play you a quick video clip of that right now. Like I said, not very conventional, but it works. Uh, I've been doing this on my tripods for years. Sometimes afterwards, there's still the crunchy, gritty sand in there and I have to take it apart. Um, but I do some other tripod maintenance as well. So luckily the Faisal tripod here that I have, it came with a bunch of tools. It came with a bag full of Allen wrenches, which fits every single size Allen screw on the uh, tripod here. And it also came with some spikes for the feet. But um, the Allen wrenches are very important because they go to the joints here that actually tightens the tension on the legs. And sometimes with your tripod, you know, the more you use it, the tension can kind of get really loose and weak on these legs. And sometimes uh, on other tripods, on Manfrotto tripods I've had in the past, especially the Manfrotto ones, they're really bad at this, you have to actually get the whole uh, thread replaced. You have to put some like, I think it's called, um, 
uh, I forget what it's called, gridlock or something lock. It's some kind of glue that you have to put in the, the screw threading because over time, those Manfrotto tripods will actually like strip the screws. It's just horrible. So anyway, um, with this Faisal tripod, it's been great. I've been using it for months now. And the way that I normally test this, by the way, and this isn't, there's no like fact or science behind this. I've just always tested the tension by putting the leg up, laying the tripod on a table or something like this. And I place my hand on the leg and not my arm or not my elbow, my hand, because my hand is gonna have the least amount of weight on it. And I just kind of slowly put my weight on the leg. And if the leg goes down in sections, what I mean by that is if it kind of stutters, goes eh, 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 then I'm good. So let me watch this. It just went down a little bit, see there? A little bit again and all the way down. So I just slowly put more weight. And if it does that, I know I'm good. You know you're in bad shape and you need to probably tighten your screws and tighten your tension. If you put your hand on it and it just does this, it just falls over. You don't want to do that. And obviously you don't want it to lift it up and it just fall, slowly fall over on its own. So that's my first test. I just simply put some, uh, some weight, kind of more and more pressure on my hand. And if it goes down in these little sections, then I know I'm good to go. Uh, and I do that on all the legs. Next thing I do, if I don't, uh, if the pressure washing it um, does not fix the issue with the grit, then the first thing I do is I take off the head and I use the little compressed air cans and I kind of blow off everything in the head. The head, I blow off everything on these little quarter turn uh, joints here and sometimes that will do it. I try to avoid taking it apart completely because it's just a pain in the butt, but if you do, it's really easy. Um, I'm not gonna go through the whole step here, but, but essentially you just loosen the uh, tripod leg all the way. And you can actually see here, so I'm not gonna actually take the leg off, but I'll show you. So you loosen it all the way, okay, like so. And once you loosen it all the way, it'll actually come off the threading here. And when it, see, this is how the ring is off. And once it comes off, there's a couple of little uh, couplings here that'll actually slide off with it. And once you get those off, the leg will just pull out of this little joint. And what I normally do is just get a, a paper towel and some water or even some Windex works really good. Uh, don't use any alcohol or anything like that. Just use like some uh, just very basic sensitive cleaner or just water and just wipe down the threading and wipe down all around where the joints are. And I do that just to get the little pieces of sand out. Um, and you can see mine is wet in here right now because I already, I pressure washed the heck out of it and, and soaked it all. But um, that's what you do. You just do that leg by leg and it can take an hour to do the whole thing because there's three joints and, yeah, and, and each leg has you know, three of these things. So there's three legs and three uh, joints where the legs come out. Your tripod might have more or less, but um, yeah, you just essentially on these Faisal tripods, you just loosen it to the point of where the uh, quarter turn here just comes right off and then you can pull the leg off and uh, simply just clean the threading and, and clean the inside of the little couplings there. Uh, like I said, paper towel and water or a paper towel and Windex works really good for me. So that's about it. Um, with the tripod, everything is great though. I didn't have to take it apart this time, which is awesome because that would have taken forever. So I'm definitely taking my tripod. Okay, let's get that, that out of the way for a second. Let me put that down here. Um, tomorrow, I'm also, since we're gonna be gone for a while and I'm going on a two hour trip, um, I'm not gonna take every lens that I own because I just don't want a lot of weight on me since we'll probably be doing a lot of walking and hiking. Um, so I'm definitely taking, obviously, Nikon D810. I'm just taking the one camera body. I'm um, taking my 16 to 35, the F4 VR version. Um, I'm still trying to decide if I should take the 70 to 200 or if I should take the 100 millimeter macro because I don't use the macro enough for outdoor photography. I normally use it for uh, product shoots or um, if I see like a flower on the trail, I'll whip it out real quick. But I, I, I need to use this more because it was... It's, it's a pricey lens and it's it's rightfully so. It's I mean, it's it's worth the money. This is a very sharp lens. So I might try to take this to just force me to do some really cool landscape stuff with this tomorrow. Um, but I'm still undecided whether I'm gonna take this or whether I'm gonna take my 70 to 200 that's in my bag. Uh, either way, I'm only gonna take two lenses um, out of the five lenses that I own. So one camera body, two lenses. I'm taking uh, this bag here. Now, I'm gonna be doing a, ba a video soon on camera bags because literally my life is like the life of a camera bag junkie. I have so many camera bags that I just don't know. I mean, I, I don't know how I accumulated all these things. I just, sometimes I'll look in, like in, in this corner of my office that I keep them in and I don't know how I, I don't even know where these bags came from. I'm just like, how did I, how did I end up with that? I don't even know where I got the bag. Anyway, one of my favorites to take on the longer hikes is this uh, low pro series and I forget what it's called. I know I'm bad about this guys. I'll put the, um, the model number of it in the video. 
Um, but it's a low pro bag. It's one of their hiking series models. It's, I think they call it the mountain series or something. And uh, it's got a, a nice, big, uh, compact, um, camera section in here for cameras, lenses, and all your gear. And then it's got a big, huge, empty section up here, which I always put a jacket in. I put my filter pouch, um, an extra pair of socks that I always take. Um, sometimes I'll put, uh, you know, a snack or whatever in here. I just put kind of, uh, practical stuff in here and then all my gear in here. And it also has an awesome slot right here on the side for a tripod. So this will actually unbuckle here. Let me show you. Let me undo this. And your tripod actually goes in here. So in this little slot here, okay, right there. And that way it kind of protects your tripod legs. It goes in there and then it buckles in and it protects your tripod legs from being scraped up against trees or anything while you're hiking. And then of course on the back, one of my favorite things about this bag is that it's got a mesh, uh, kind of a mesh netting on the back so that uh, it, it keeps me really cool while I'm hiking because I hate having a heavy bag on my back with no ventilation through my back. So you can see here, if I turn it sideways, it's actually got, let me move that out of the way, it's actually got space right here uh, that separates my back from the actual back of the bag. Um, so anyway, that's awesome. Um, in the actual waist part here that goes around my waist, there's zipper pouches for my phone and my wallet, so I have quick access to that. Uh, this bag is just very functional and awesome for me. I love this bag. Um, I always take it on my longer day trips. So anyway, that, this is the bag that I'm taking. Uh, it comes with a little pouch that I always keep my filters in. So this is the pouch. I always keep my nine stop uh, ND filter in here, uh, 10 stop ND filter, a circular polarizer, and then I have a three stop ND filter. So I always keep all my filters in here in this little pouch that works out perfect. It's waterproof as well. Uh, so I just throw that in the bag and then obviously taking my camera body to lenses and then over here uh, off camera, you can't see it. I have a whole nother camera bag uh, that has my drone and all of my drone stuff in it. So uh, it has my, uh, my DJI quadcopter. It has the quadcopter remote. It has three batteries for the quadcopter, the charger, iPhone cable. Uh, all that stuff. So I'm taking two bags, but I'm not going to carry both bags at the same time because my dad and brother are coming. Neither of them are photographers. They just uh, enjoy coming along and we like hanging out together. So one of them uh, already said they would carry that for me. So I'm going to stick one of them with the drone. I'll carry all my camera stuff and it will be uh, a great time. So um, as far as the way I plan for my shoots whenever I go on these day adventures. There's a great app you can get for your smartphone. My favorite one, uh, the one that I use is called Photo Pills, and you can plan so much with that app. So it, if you've ever used something like the Photographer's Ephemeris, this app is like the Photographer's Ephemeris on steroids. It will tell you exactly where the sun is going to be minute by minute. It will help you plan uh, how to shoot the Milky Way as far as the direction goes. It will give you like a, a 2D Milky Way map um, and show you where it's going to be, where all the stars are going to end up. Um, it's, it has a, a, a depth of field calculator for you. So you can, if you're not sure about the hyperfocal distance of your shot, you can tell it your lens you're using. You can type in the, uh, the f-stop you're using, the shutter speed, uh, the focal length, everything. And it'll just tell you, okay, four feet in front of your lens and on, everything will be sharp. So it's got like so much stuff, so many planning um, functions within that app that helps you kind of plan out a shoot if you're going somewhere like I am, which is an unknown location where I'm just going to kind of be hopping around from location to location tomorrow because I'm going out of state tomorrow. So anyway, I always use that app. Um, also, as far as planning, I, I do research the night before. So before this video, I've already done research and kind of looked up some stuff on Flickr. I've looked up some Google images just to get an idea of where I might want to shoot. Um, but I never copy those images. You always want to get kind of an idea of where, you know, of what the location is going to look like so that you kind of know, um, that that's how I kind of plan on, you know, what lenses I'm going to bring. Cause I know that there's going to be waterfalls. So I want some wide, my wide angle lens, but I also know that there's some overlooks and with fall colors, I like kind of compressing the overlook and kind of getting, uh, bringing the mountains with the fall colors kind of closer. So that's where I'm deciding if I want to bring this or the 70 to 200. Um, but anyway, this was just a, a quick video so that I could tell you guys that I got the camera back. Uh, wanted to show you how I clean my tripod uh, of the salt water and the sand. And uh, I wanted to thank you all as well for um, participating in the Prince for Finn campaign that I did. I haven't said that in the past couple of videos, but uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about, uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, my friend that has a son that has cystic fibrosis um, 
They have a lot of medical bills to, uh, to pay because the, the U.S. government doesn't provide any help for them. So uh, I did a, a print campaign where I sold my own prints to help go towards their medical expenses. And uh, we raised a lot of money for them. So thank you guys so much. It means so much to me. Um, other than that, hope you guys have a wonderful weekend and a wonderful week after that, getting all the fall colors wherever you are in the world. Um, and thank you guys, as always, for watching my videos. Take care, and I'll see you in the next one. If you would like to stay up to date on all of my latest photography videos and adventures, click the big subscribe button below. And if you would like to find out more about me and how to become a great photographer, visit my website at findingmiddleearth.com.